Good morning. Glad to uh, barely see you. Thank the Lord for this uh, this parking lot full and the parking lot across the road as well. Amen. And we're glad that you can tune in and hear us. There's a variety of ways you can. I'm sure you have figured that out by now. All right, if you can tune us in. Uh, wherever you are, we're glad for those that are seated outside across the road, for those that are uh, here in our parking lot, the parking lot over there. Uh, let me let me just say a word to the church family this morning. First of all, i got to thank everybody for uh, providing the refreshments that are here on the table. Two tables. We had to have two tables this morning. And there are some uh, refreshments for the body and their are plenty of refreshments for the soul this morning. Amen. And so there are uh, magazines, there are uh, things for uh, the ladies and for the men, and we want you to take advantage of that. If you'd get all of them, we wouldn't have to bring them back in uh, this morning. But they're here, and I uh, want you to make sure you go by and pick up whatever you need, and we'd love for you to take them. And so thank Howard. Uh, for his labor of love that comes early on Sunday morning and gets all of this prepared. And he sets up the table. And yeah, we thank him. Don't we thank him for that? We do thank him. And then he goes all the way down to the end of the parking lot and sits down there in the car <laughs> uh, after, this is, after we get through serving everybody. So it's there. And then I have a, th a thank you and a prayer request to the church family. Um, Albert Ferguson brought this uh, in behalf of his daughter. Uh, she has written to the church family. Of course, you know she had her baby. And she says, I want to thank everybody for praying for baby Jasper. He continually has trouble breathing. And sometimes he passes out when he tries to eat. Cassie is home doing well. Her baby has another two to three weeks in the hospital. Please continue to pray. I know that God is going to bring him through this. Continue to pray for my sister also. And this is to this church family uh, this morning. And I hope you'll put that on your prayer list. And you will make that an object of prayer daily when you pray uh, of course we uh, miss Kay and Walter this morning I talked to Walter earlier this morning and they did admit her to the hospital last night uh, she has a bad case of colitis and they're treating her in uh, Morganton at the hospital uh, so please remember Walter he took her down there and got to stay with her until they got her admitted. He went back this morning, and they would not let him in the hospital. Uh, so he called, just said, have the church family to pray uh, for her and to pray for him. And, of course, we've got a lot of folks in our church family. Many of them are gone on vacation. Some will be going next week. And so we do remember you as you travel. And many others, I'm sure, across this uh, congregation of cars in both parking lots, that we have a lot of needs that are right here. Uh, you made an effort to be here, and for that we are grateful. We do pray for you, and uh, Miss Marie is gone. So guess what? We're going to do some singing with Jerry. We got uh, we got Jerry up here playing the guitar. And uh, we're gonna, you're gonna sing with him, right? We're gonna have everybody sing with him. This song, you know, we're gonna sing "Victory in Jesus" and then a little chorus together. And uh, I want to pray with you before we start, and then we're gonna recognize uh, special young people in our church family. Will you bow with me this morning, Father? When we begin this morning, the place we begin and always begin is to honor you. And to thank you and to praise your name. For you and you alone are worthy 
of our praise. Uh, there is no other reason that we would get ready this morning and come and park in our cars and get out and sit in the cemetery and sit in this parking lot uh, other than the fact that you are our Father and you are worthy of all of our praise. And Lord, we, we, we want to take this day, this time you've given us this morning, just to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Every good thing that we have in life, we praise you for it. I want to pray for these that we are aware of this morning. A couple of requests and many, many others in our church family. We lift them up to you. We know you're, you're a mighty God. and You're able to help in time of need. Lord, we could not pray this morning without praying for our nation. We pray for our leaders this morning. Desperate, desperate need of prayer. There seems to be no person. While we hear the voices of many who claim that they have the answer, we really believe, Lord, there is no person that has the answers that we so desperately need. Some way we bow our knee and our heart and our head to the only one that has all power in heaven and earth. And I pray that you'll help us as a nation. We do not know where this is going. But we pray for protection upon our people. We pray for your safety upon us. And I pray you'll give these uh, doctors the wisdom to know how to come up with a solution. And Lord, even after that, we're not going to give them credit. We're going to give you all the praise. Because they could do nothing if it were not for you. And we, we acknowledge that this morning. So I pray that this will be a time of worship. This, this is not uh, what we usually do, but Lord, it, it, it is so great be out here in your presence. We're grateful. Your presence is not confined inside of a building. But you're so great. There is not a building anywhere that can hold you. That you are greater than your creation. So Father, I pray that as we sing and as we honor these and then as we listen to your word, that we will truly worship you and leave here saying that it's been good for us to be in the house of the Lord this day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, you got to sing with Jerry and Manny and anybody else that we could get up here this morning. We're going to sing. We're going to sing Victory in Jesus. I think you know that. And so sing it with us, if you will.
and recognize uh, the young people of our church family. We don't do this lightly because they are a very, very important part of our church family. But I'm sure they realize and I, I am sure that every parent and every grandparent realizes the sacrifice that has to be made uh, to get your child from the time they start uh, in preschool and all the way through. Uh, it takes a lot of love and a lot of help, a lot of support, a lot of encouragement. Uh, not only from their family, but from their church family. I thought this week about this morning, and we're going to recognize these young people of our church when I was in Fruitland, it came to graduation day. Somehow they'd elected me president of the student body. And so we were going to honor all the graduates. And they came to me and they said, um, we've got an award that we need to give out to some other people uh, that's part of their family. Now these were, these were young preachers like me and some of them were older. And uh, we sort of thought, boy, I've made it through, and I, I'm going to graduate. But they gave me a piece of paper when I got up before the student body and made the announcement. They said, we've got a, we've got a certificate to give to a special group of people before we honor our graduates. And it was a 
PhT award. And I'd never heard of that. I thought, well, boy, they don't have one of them here in this college. They don't have, I'm not seeing that on the schedule. But they said this PhD is a, an award that is to be given to the wife of every one of these young men. And they've earned the award, the award of putting husband through. And they're, of course, they gave me this to read. I didn't, I didn't want to read it, but they said, they said these men would have never made it through if it had not been for their wives. And of course, when I read all that, uh, there was a large uh, applause in the in the audience that was out there. But I thought about that. Uh, these children and these young people did not make it through all on their own. Uh, they had the help. They had the prayers. They had the support of mamas and daddies and grandparents. And when they continue their education, they'll continue to have the support, the help of mamas and daddies and grandparents. And we want them to know this morning they have the support of this church. They have the backing. They have anything we can do to help them. Uh, as they further their education. I was pastoring my second church when, when we did that when I was in school. And I'll never forget one day, and I never heard this, uh, that, a, that a fellow came spoke in our chapel. And he said, if you think you are through with your education, you are through. And nobody ever told me that. But isn't it true? All of life is an education. Amen. Every experience you have is a time to learn. And so we are so proud of our young people this morning and the love, the sacrifice of their parents and grandparents. And for this church family, through the generosity of people in this church, uh, they have provided funds for us to give them a scholarship. And so we're going to do that this morning. And so we're going to begin. All, all I have are the names that have been turned into me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm going to read what I have. And Miss Sharon, where you come? You come on up here. And she, she's going to greet them when they get by me down at the bottom and give them uh, their scholarship and recognition and this church this pastor is so proud of you and uh, we our prayers do not end today uh, we continue to pray for you preschool well we've got some young young folks that have moved or they're moving on from preschool uh, first of all mr. Landon Birch yeah you want to give him a hand if you're in the car you can blow your horn wherever you are See, I got to hold some of them up. <laughs> this is who he is. Don't you see him? <laughs> <Yes. Wait a minute. laughs> the further we go, the less I'll do that. Just want you to know that. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Raiden Wilson. Uh, they're going to preschool. They're going. And Miss Cora Rose. here that have uh, graduated from elementary school they're going to junior high 
And let me call them by name. Mr. Lane Birch. Picture of you say that you got a way back. I had to, I to make him, <laughs> yeah, right down there, okay. Mr. Ethan Laws, <laughs> He'd rather be out in the garden than being up here this morning. Uh, that end. All right, congratulations. Mr. Troy Ransom, come on up here, Mr. Troy. And we're proud of you. There's some people out there taking pictures of you and so. <laughs> Let's see people see you. All right. That's grandparents out there blowing the horn so much. Christian Lawin. All right. Now we've got a group up here that have. Uh, for this to be uh, an unusual year, uh, only this group of young people could this happen to. <laughs> and boy, do they have a lot to tell. They'll have a lot to tell down the road about this year and what they went through. I'm going to call them by name, and the ones that I know, I'll tell you where they're going. Uh, Miss Autumn Bartlett. <laughs> Would you like to talk? I mean, you know. <laughs> listen, she is, she is graduating from, uh, she has graduated from McDowell High. She received a scholarship to Wingate College, and she is going to Wingate on a scholarship. Congratulations. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, stand right here. Let, let me just get the other one up here, Miss Summer Bartlett. Now see if you can tell the difference, please. I was <laughs> you know the twins because both of them, both of them said the same thing. Are you going to lift us up? <laughs> uh, but she also, she also has a scholarship to Wingate College, and uh, these two young ladies, uh, they're going to be playing. Uh, Track. Oh, they're going to be running track. We don't run. We don't run. <laughs> and they said they don't run either. I said, what are you doing in track then if you don't run? That's how far back I will go. But we're so proud of, of these two young ladies. We watched them grow up together. And their parents and the contribution parents have made. Our prayer is that they know, they know when they go off to college, they've got a group of people here that are praying for them. Congratulations. Miss <laughs> Haley Robinson, would you please come? And so we're so proud of her too. Anytime you get through high school, it's a great accomplishment. She is she's going to attend McDowell Tech, and uh, we're praying that all these places will open up soon. And we're so proud of Miss Haley and her accomplishments, grandparents and parents that have made such a contribution in her life. And what we want her to know, this church, this church is proud of her Amen. and her labor. God bless you.
And Miss Haley Laws is coming this morning. This young lady, this young lady is going to McDowell Tech, but she uh, completed early college. And uh, so, amen, amen. What an accomplishment. And uh, she is, uh, I don't know what to say about her other than the fact uh, she, she can do a variety of things. Uh, the Lord has blessed her with so many gifts and talents. And uh, she is going to put them to use and she's going to further her education at McDowell Tech, and Haley, we want you to know this church is so proud of you and what you've become. <laughs> Mr. Travis Beatty. Travis, we want you to come. Everybody out there needs to give He did get accepted to McDowell Tech, and he said that's where he'll be going. And uh, so I could talk to him and say, you know, when I graduated, they didn't do this. And if you'd asked me the day I graduated, what are you going to do? I said, uh, well, I'm going to the beach. <laughs> they said, what you going to do with your life? I'm going to the beach. <laughs> I had cousins going. Some of them are preaching now, but we went to the beach together. And, uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, I just followed my daddy's footsteps. He worked in the cotton mill. Uh, I worked uh, one summer. I found out that, that ain't what I want to do. <laughs> uh, so you have to do some things to find out. You don't want to do that to find out what you want to do. But this young man, he has, he has, uh, he has labored hard and he has worked. And we're so proud of him. And this church family is proud of your accomplishments, Travis. I will recognize the one, I don't think he's here this morning, Josh Davison. I did talk to Josh last night. And many of you know, he graduated and he got a scholarship to go to Campbell University. And... Uh, We'll be talking to him later. We don't want him to go down, especially with all that's going on in his family and the loss of his mom. That we we're gonna we're gonna be talking to him, and uh, we have some funds that we hopefully that we can help him some as he goes uh, to Campbell University. So we recognize him this morning. <laughs> I'll talk to him and I'll let him know he got more blowing horns this morning than anybody. <laughs> and from college, uh, she left with her family to go on vacation. Uh, but Grandma's here. Krista Taylor, uh, a vet technician. And uh, she graduated from Gaston College down in Gastonia. Uh, she is doing an intern uh, uh, at a vet here in McDowell County. Uh, when she completes that, she's going to further her education. So Grandma's back there, and we, we acknowledge her, and uh, we praise the Lord for her. And then there's two scholarships that we have left that we're, we're giving. Miss Katie Brown. Katie, will you come? Dow Tech for LPN Bridge Program. <laughs> All right. Miss Katie. Boy, we watched her grow up too. And we have prayed for her. And we are so thankful this morning that she is here. That this church can let her know that this is a special young lady that our church family. And Katie, uh, we pray for you. And we're so proud 
of what you've accomplished and just want to see what God's going to do to you in the future. And I will, I will make this announcement. He probably does not want me to make this announcement, but I will. Uh, Mr. Dean Rhodes uh, has felt for some time uh, God dealing with him. And so on his own, of course he still has his job, but on his own, uh, he went to Fruitland and he talked to them about some of their uh, programs they have. And so he has, uh, he has signed up. Uh, he can go. Well, I think right now he may be doing everything online. When they go back, and they have such a wonderful program. For those who cannot come uh, during the day, they can go to night classes. And he can go one night a week and uh, study. So that's what he has uh, committed himself to do. And uh, we pray for him. Uh, whatever God has for him down the road. We know the Lord will let him know that. But this morning we, we recognize him. He's sitting across the road somewhere. But we do glory to him. All right. We do pray for all of these. And thank you parents as well. I don't have an award to give to the parents this morning. I just recognize you and acknowledge you. And uh, we thank you for your prayers. And know you have the prayers of God's people. All right. Mr. Jerry's going to play. And Miss Christie is going to sing. And we are going to worship God this morning.
things you, you know when I get up to preach. That Jerry told me, he said, Preacher, no matter how hot it gets out here, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to be right out here. If you can be out here in the heat and preach, I'll be right behind you. So I am grateful. Jerry is right here behind me this morning. And been here every Sunday for that. Yeah, I know you appreciate him playing and Christy singing. And maybe at the end of the service, we she might have another one ready. Or I'm, Jerry's always ready if you just tell him. All right, we're taking our Bibles. Psalm 65. Psalm 65. For you that are able to come on Wednesday night, you know we're doing a study through the Psalms. And we have got through up to Psalm 90. That means 90 Wednesday nights. We have taken our Bibles and we've studied the Psalms. I went back and read a couple of Psalms that we've already covered. And I feel this morning that God would have me to uh, share a few thoughts out of Psalm 50, 65. Psalm 65. And our focus this morning will be on verse 4. Anytime you read, and this is repeated time and time again in the Psalms, where it says, Blessed is the man. Probably every one of us are interested in being blessed this morning. And if we're all honest, we would say we have been blessed. Uh, we bless Him. But the reason He can bless us is because we're willing to bless Him. The psalmist said, you read this phrase repeated time and time again, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Uh, this is a favorite term for God to hear from His people. Uh, he begins this psalm, and, and, and the implication when you read all of these psalms about blessing the Lord uh, really, he says we bless him, not that he needs anything. God is complete in and of himself. He does not need anything. We cannot add anything to God this morning. And all over this world, we don't add anything to God because he is God. And we are not. But when we bless Him, we learn from the Scriptures that when I bless Him, it opens the door for God to bless me. That's a two-way street there. I bless the Lord, and in turn, God blesses me. Uh, this word, bless, is an interesting word. It was... Uh, Psalm, Psalm 65, written by the psalmist David. He gave it to Asap, and Asap was to take it down to the temple, and he was to write music to it, and then he was to lead God's people in blessing the name of the Lord. In fact, the first verse and the first word says, praise waiteth for thee, O God in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. Now, I just want to clarify that statement there. Uh, praise is waiting for thee, O God, he says. The implication is not that we're just waiting on God to do something, and then I will praise him. The implication there is that I praise him and then as a result of that, he blesses me. And through the Psalm 65, you'll find that David says, we owe him our praise. It's something that I owe him. Amen. And how often do I owe it to him? I owe him every day because he has earned it. Amen. 
And, and David said, this sort of like a payment that I make to God, that I praise Him. I offer praise unto Him because He has blessed me. Do you know that God does not have to do anything else for any of us this morning in order for us to praise Him? Now some may say, well, I, you know, I'm waiting on God. Guess what? He's waiting on you. He is waiting on us. And when I praise Him, then in turn He opens up the windows of heaven and He blesses me. You got anything to praise Him for this morning? In fact, when you read Psalm 65, I'll just read the latter part of the psalm. And uh, he, he says to us as, as an encouragement for us to praise God, he says that all creation is praising God. Look in verse number 9 of this chapter. What he says that God has done to this earth. Thou visiteth the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly enricheth it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn when thou hast, hast not, when thou hast so provided it. Thou waterest the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest it soft with showers. Thou blessest the spring in thereof. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy past drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered over with the corn. They shout for joy. They also sing. Now, now, do we hear what he said? Just listen and look at all creation. Look what God has done. And he said, creation blesses the Lord. And we have been saved by his marvelous grace. We are more than his creation. We are his children this morning. And if there's one thing we owe him, we owe him our worship. Do you know that is your payment to God? You may come to church this morning. You may look around and say, I don't have a penny in my pocket. Do you know God's not looking for what's in your pocket? He's looking for what's in your heart. Amen. And he said, out of your heart, you are to praise me. Praise waiting. Here's God waiting on us to praise him. Well, he gives us a couple of reasons why in verse 2. O thou that hearest prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. Got to just say this morning, if God has ever heard your prayer and answered your prayer, you know what you owe him? You owe him praise. Amen. You owe him gratitude. Amen. You owe him. He says, God, you heard my prayer. He says, listen to it in verse number three. Iniquities prevail against me. I, I am a sinful man, he said. And when I go to God, uh, I've got all of these iniquities that come up against me. And as for our transgressions, thou shalt purge them away. Aren't you glad for the remainder of that verse? He said, if you're full of transgressions and iniquities, you go to God and He's the one that's able to purge them away and He's able to wash away all of our sins. Amen. And so He Amen. says in this passage, blessed, I'll get to the title of this message in a moment, but He says we are favored by God. Amen. We have the favor of God upon our lives. And blessed is the man that is favored by God. And if you're here this morning and you're a child of God, I just want to tell you, you have the favor of God upon your heart and Amen. upon your life. Amen. In this verse number four, one verse this morning, verse number four, he talks about how blessed we are by having the favor of God upon our life. Let me read it to you. Verse 4, blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causeth to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house 
even of thy holy temple. Three things that David said about if you're favored this morning. And if you're not, if you're not saved, if you've never put your faith in the Lord, can I tell you, he wants to favor you this morning. He wants to shower his forgiveness upon you and put faith in your heart. It is only in the heart of faith of people that have faith that they will recognize that we are indeed favored by God. Blessed is that man that has found favor with God. Amen. Blessed. You are blessed this morning. Amen. And I remind you, according to this verse, that you didn't find favor on your own. That you did not get favor with God by yourself. And he mentions three things in this verse, three aspects of our being favored and being blessed by the Lord. I have a pastor, a friend of mine, uh, that uh, over the years I have got acquainted with him. And uh, first time I met him, he said this statement. And then I met him again and again and again. And uh, every time I meet him, I, I said to myself, but I catch myself saying to him, how you doing? How are things going? And he will say, I am blessed. I am favored. Amen. Better than I deserve. Amen. I thought, well, that's not original with me, but I think I'll start saying that because I am favored by the Lord. Amen. And you have the favor of God upon you if you belong to him. Amen. Let me give you quickly three things uh, that David says in this passage about the man that is blessed that finds his favor in God. Number one, we are favored by his compelling us to come to him. Let me read verse four said, blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Do you know that none of us would have ever chosen God if God had not chosen us? And none of us ever come to God on our own. And I'll tell you the obvious reason for that, that this flesh does not like to do that. I mean, this flesh does not like bowing down. It does not want to come and admit we are wrong. I just want to ask you this morning, you don't have to blow your horn, you don't have to say anything. But I know this is true because I live in a body of flesh. There's sometimes this flesh does not want to get up on Sunday morning and come down here and sit in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I got a few people to be honest out there. Uh, I, I'll tell you, the only reason, you know the only reason any of us are here this morning is because inside of us, God chose us and he draws us to himself. And do you know that nobody can come to him unless his spirit draw us to him? Amen. And if you're here this morning and there's been a time in your life that you recognize that God chose you and God drew you to himself. He says in that verse, Blessed is a man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee. If you've ever come to God for whatever reason, I will assure you, you didn't come by yourself. It was the Holy Spirit of God that came to you Amen. and drew you to Him. Amen. I will assure you, I, I was raised in a church, you know that. Before I was ever born, my mom went to church with me and I, I went to church. I valued my life. If I didn't go to church, I wasn't sure I was going to live. So she put the fear of mama in me. Then when I went to church, I got the fear God put in me. Amen. But do you know I'd been to church hundreds and hundreds and thousands of times. I'd been to church all of my life. And I'd been there for the singing. I'd been there for the preaching. But I want to tell you on that Sunday morning when the Holy Spirit of God came to me and found me and began to draw me to the Lord and let me know that God wanted me and made me aware that really I wanted him. And I came. He compelled me to come. And it is a blessed thing this morning. 
that God wants any of us today. Amen. According Amen. to the scripture, he chose me. What that verse says, blessed is that man whom thou choosest. Well, when did he choose you? Was it when you got good enough and you looked pretty and you dressed up in your Sunday go to meeting clothes on Sunday? I just want to tell you, according to this Bible, God chose us before the foundation of this world. Amen. And God loved me and God cared for me and God wanted me. And in time, in time, He made me aware that I really wanted Him. I needed more than what I had. And so He says, if you're if you were compelled to come to Him, He causes you to come. You are blessed this morning. Amen. You may not have much down the road, but I want to tell you back at your house, but if you got Jesus, I'll tell you, you've got enough to get you to heaven. Amen. You've got what you need to get you to heaven. And so He said, Blessed is that man. Blessed is that man. I just stand here this morning to say, I have been blessed, and I am one that has been blessed because God chose me. Amen. There is this compelling, compelling by Him. Well, once we come to Him, is that the end of it? Oh, no. Listen to this verse. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. And he shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Let me tell you two things. When we come to him and he compels us to come. And I just want to say this morning. Boy, the Holy Spirit does have compelling power, doesn't he? Amen. I mean, you may turn the preacher down, you may turn somebody else down, but when the Holy Spirit starts knocking on your door, you'll find it something you cannot turn around, you cannot resist. He compels us to come. Amen. But once we get there, you notice the second thing we learned about the blessed man, the favored man by God. He is compelled to come to him, but then he says we are able to commune with him. Let me tell you two aspects of our community. Number one, that means you are welcome at the house of God. Amen. You are welcome at the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, I would say probably, I don't know of anybody, it might be somebody here, that you'll never get an invitation to go down to Raleigh to the governor's house. I'll just leave it right there. And I doubt if any of us get an invitation to go to the White House. I'll leave that alone too. But can I tell you, the God who created heaven and earth says you're welcome at my house. Amen. You are welcome Amen. at the throne of grace. Do you know Amen. God's got a real, that God's got a real, you're welcome at the throne of grace. You're welcome at the throne of grace. There is a real throne this morning and there is the King of Kings who is seated on that throne. Amen. And when you read through the book of Revelation to find out what's going on up there, you'll find he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible said in the book of Revelation, there are sounds of thunder and lightning. There are angels that are going around saying holy, holy, holy. Amen. There is a choir there. John saw it in the book of Revelation. And there are millions and millions of saints of God Amen. that are going to be in that choir. And we're going to be singing, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Amen. I will assure you that it is a visible throne it's not our imagination when you get there you'll see the throne and you'll see him who is seated on that throne and you're welcome there because you are safe you're one of God's children and you're going to be at home when you get there 
Amen. This world is not our home. There's a visible throne, but there is a spiritual throne. Do you know that? The only reason you can get there to that throne is confess you're nothing but a sinner. But when God comes to you, brings to you his salvation, and just be honest, a lot of us, even after we say, we've got a lot of baggage we carry around with us. We carry a lot of luggage around. We've got all kind of attitudes. We've got all kind of feelings that we carry around. And it is amazing, I say this morning, it is amazing with all that we have to carry around in this world that we're even able to come out here and worship God. But when we get around that throne, you're going to leave it all behind. There'll be no more pain. And I'm speaking to people this morning that daily, constantly live with pain. But there's coming a day you're going to leave all the pain behind. Amen. You're going to leave all the problems behind. You ever know a place you can go get away from problems? I found that problems know where I live. They know where you live and they'll follow you and they will find you. Amen, preacher. Amen. Don't come out here this morning and say, oh, I don't have a bit of problems. I don't have a problem. If you're human, you do. That's right. Amen. In that place around the throne of God, there'll be no more tears. You won't spend nights weeping. We will perfectly praise Him. And we will be at that throne forever. And we get to go there. And we get to praise God forever. Amen. Favored? Do you think I'm favored? Amen. Once in a while when I've grown up, people say, oh, you're your mama's favorite. Well, I wouldn't. You asked me when she was giving me a whip, and I didn't think I was a favorite. But I just want to tell you, if you're a child of God, you're one of his favorites. Amen. Do you know you're his favorite this morning? Oh, listen, at the throne of grace. And I just tell you, I've already been up there this morning. By faith, I've already been to the throne of grace. And ask God to help us in this service this morning. The king will be there. Amen. And we are his children. I read about a great monarch. Had servants and had, uh, had he was in his throne room. Seated on the throne. He had his servants. He had his potentates of everybody. He was, he was the man. He was on the throne. All of a sudden, the door opened at the back. And a little boy started running in. And of course, one of the servants grabbed him by the arm and said, Young man, do you know you're in the throne room of the king? And do you know that the king is on the throne? You're not allowed in here. He sort of pulled away from one of those guards and he looked at him and he said, Sir, he may be your king, but that's my father sitting on the throne. Amen. <laughs> and hallelujah, I've got a father that's seated on the throne this morning and he welcomes me to come. Amen. I've got the access. I've got the privilege to come to the throne of God. Have you been there this morning? You ought to go there today. The king's there. He's waiting on you to come. You're one of his children. We're welcome at the throne of God. There was a time I wasn't welcome, but by his son and through his grace, I'm welcome Amen. in the presence of God this morning. Amen. By the way, it's not anything I can brag about. It's all about what Jesus did for me. Blessed Amen. is that man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee. When the world, when the flesh, when the devil says, you cannot come to God, the one on the throne says you can come. Amen. He said you can approach me. You Amen. can come to me. I'm welcome at the throne of God this morning. And that means if I'm welcome at the throne of God, then I'm welcome at the house of God. Amen. 
Amen. He shall dwell in his courts. You say, oh, yes, I know we're going to heaven. Thank God when we get there, I'm going to feel at home. I'm going to be at home. Do you know you can feel at home in the house of God now because this is his house and you are one of his children? Amen. Well, we're blessed. We're blessed this morning. We come to the house of God. A place that has been dedicated to Him. Not to man, but to God. And when we get here, we try our best to honor Him. We try our best to do what He wants us to do. We can sing when we get here. Well, that's what we're going to do in heaven. We're going to sing. Amen. We can pray when we get here. Hallelujah. We can pray together. Amen. You know you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to sing and to pray and to praise God. No, no. You know what we do when we come to his house? I'll, I'll just briefly, very briefly mention. When I come to the house of God, when I first got saved, I went because I had the threats of my mama behind me saying, you're going. But when the Lord came into my life, I, I just tell you, uh, I can't explain it to you. All I can tell you is, what a wonderful change in my life. Amen. When Jesus came into my heart. Amen. When I went to church, I found some godly examples of how to live the Christian life. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I didn't know what living the Christian life was all about, even though I had mom and daddy. When I went to church, it's there that I learned how to pray. I learned to pray. I learned to pray. I learned to read my Bible. I learned how to study the Bible. Oh, what a blessed event that I learned from some godly examples at the house of God. Amen. By the way, that's the, that's the ones the Lord will point out to you. The devil will point you out to everybody else. If you have followed the Lord, he'll show you godly examples. Amen. I got encouragement when I went to the house of God. Boy, when somebody get up and testify what God done for them, the blessings of God in their life, I didn't have one. I didn't know how to do it, but brother, they sure did. And they got up and shared what God had meant to them and how they'd struggled, but God had helped them. I'll tell you, when I went out that week, I found if God can help them, God can help me, and God can encourage me. I found that at the house of God. Amen. You won't get much spiritual encouragement in this world, but brother, you come down here, somebody hug your neck, and somebody say, I love you, and somebody say, I'm praying for you, and they'll encourage you in your faith. I get exhortation. I not only see examples, and I get encouragement, but brother, I get exhortation. Oh, thank God for those godly teachers. Amen. Those men of God Amen. studied and prepared. Teachers, you keep right on studying. You keep right on preparing. God's going to give to you what he has a word for you to give to somebody else. There is, we're welcome. We're welcome. Do you know you're welcome at the house of God? Amen. Amen. And you say, well, nobody else welcomes me. The owner of the house does. <laughs> God, he, he owns a house. That's right. It is his house. And none of us are here because we deserve it. We're all here by his invitation and by his grace. Amen. So we're all on the same level when we get here. Amen. Simon said, do you know how favored you are? Do you know how blessed you are? I've come this morning to just tell you how blessed you are. And all this going on in our world, what you see and what you hear may beat you down. I, I don't 
if you see what's going on in our world and hear what's going on, I just ha I just happened to be down in Morganton late yesterday evening. My advice to you, do not drive up Main Street in Morgan. You may not get through. I never seen so many protesters and so many people out there with everything in this world. And I never heard so much yelling and screaming at each other. And they were all out there. And I may preach on that in a couple of weeks. They were all surrounded this monument. You've got your opinion, i got mine. I think most of us feel the same way. They were all out there. They were going to protect that monument and of course when you had when you had hundreds of people surrounding it with everything in this world you always had a handful that were uh, that were determined you know we we if we get a chance we'd tear that monument down i came home and i've been been studying on the passage and in the book of acts when paul stepped in a situation where in Athens, they had 30,000 monuments. And they were not built and dedicated to man. They were dedicated to one of their gods. Paul stood right in the midst of them. And he said, there's one that you don't know about. You've got all these 30,000 gods out here. But there is an unknown God that you don't know anything about. He is the one that I've come to preach to you. Amen. Could I tell you this morning that our God is bigger and greater than a monument? Amen. 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 You tear down monuments made by man. You cannot tear down the throne of God. Amen. I'm telling you, he'll always be God. He'll always be on the throne. Amen. Cannot fight against him and win. That's right. He is still on the throne this morning. Amen. Amen. He compels us to come to him. And then when we get there, he communes with us. He talks with us. And then I'll just mention briefly the final thing. Notice what he said in that verse, verse number four. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. He causes us to approach unto thee in order that we may dwell in his courts and then we'll be satisfied with the goodness of his house, even of thy holy temple. Blessed is that man. We shall be satisfied with his goodness. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, the God we know is the God that can satisfy. Amen. If you're here this morning and you're still searching for something to satisfy, only Jesus can satisfy the soul. Amen. You're satisfied today in your soul. Can I just use two words? You are blessed and you have been favored by God. Amen. Amen. Some people have spent it all and they have tried it all. And they're still out there this morning searching and trying. Can I come to you this morning and tell you Jesus and only Jesus can satisfy the soul and Jesus is enough. We have a lot of things fill up our life. We've got our hobbies. Uh, we've got our jobs. We've got our family. We've got our relationships. But for the soul. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. Amen. 
when David was inspired to write this down. He was a king. And he had everything. Can you imagine being the king? He had everything. He had access to everything. But David said in this psalm, My satisfaction is not in things. All that I've got, only God can satisfy my soul. Amen. Many of us that are a little older, some of the young people may not know. You remember the story, the life about Randolph Hearst? During his day, one of the wealthiest men on the face of the earth. He had everything. In his mansion, he had a large art museum. And his one passion in life was to buy every piece of art that he thought was valuable. He would send out servants. He heard about paintings and artwork. He just had to have it. He just was not satisfied with all that he had. So he, he heard about a painting and he knew where it was that he didn't have. So he sent out these servants and said, whatever the cost is, you spare no expenses. You go you find this piece of art and then he said, it doesn't matter what the cost is, you buy it. I've got to have that piece of art. The servants went out. They searched and they searched. They could not find it. They thought it was very dangerous for them to go back home and back to the mansion and not have this piece of art. But they came back and they came up with a plan and they said, we'll go in and we'll talk to Randolph Hearst. And we went in and we said to him, we couldn't find it out there in the world. We searched every place, every village, every place where they had expensive artwork. We, we, we couldn't find it. But we've got good news for you. When we came back home and we dreaded to tell you we couldn't find it. We went down in the basement of your museum and said, guess what? We found that piece of art that you had bought it years and years ago. It had never been unwrapped. And the good news we got for you, you own that piece of art and it's going to cost you nothing. Can I tell you this morning? Jesus has already given the greatest gift in this world. Amen. And that is the Amen. gift of his son. Amen. And you don't have to go through this world searching for something that you think you don't have. But if you have Jesus this morning, he will satisfy your soul. And you are favored by God. Listen, you may never get the favor of man. If that's what you're living for. You may satisfy some, but I will assure you this morning that you'll never get the favor of man upon your life. And in the end, when this life is over and you stand before God, it's not going to be how many people in this world you're going to gather around you to convince God that you're favored. The only thing that's going to matter, does God favor you? Amen. Have you found favor with Him? Amen. Have you found satisfaction in Him? That's why people all over the world, down through the years, they've had everything stripped away from them. And many of them have given their life. But one thing they could not do, they could not take Jesus out of their heart. And I'm here this morning to tell you, blessed is that man. His goal in life is to find the favor of God. And you find that favor when you come to him. When you come to him, he compels you to come. 
And then when you get there, you can commune with him. And hallelujah. There will be a day when he's going to complete that. He will complete us. He's still working on us this morning. Amen. All of us are work under progress. But one day, that's going to be over with. And then we shall be satisfied in his presence. Amen. I just tell you this morning, I'm not satisfied with me. But I am satisfied with Jesus. Amen. I am Amen. satisfied with him. There's nothing else he needs to do. He is the satisfaction of my soul and my heart. If you're here this morning, I want you to bow your heads if you can. Just a moment. If you don't have that satisfaction, you don't have to be inside of a church. You can be out here in the parking lot. You can be in your automobile. You can be on your job. Wherever it is that the Lord comes to you. Wherever he appears to you. Right then and right there, just open your heart. And say, Lord, I'm not complete without you. But I, you brought me to you. And only you can satisfy the longing of my heart. And ask him right where you are. Oh, listen to me. I talked with Jesus for a week before I got to church. And it wasn't I was looking for him. He wouldn't let me alone. He found me. And I wasn't in church. But he found me and he would not leave me alone. If he's chosen you this morning, he won't leave you alone. Greatest day in your life to find contentment in your heart is just to bow your heart before Him. Let Him be the Lord of your life. And then we're going to live with Him forever and forever. I pray for that. In every car, every person seated out on the grounds. And Lord, there are some people that we don't even know about. That this service has been recorded. We're going to put it on some CDs. We'll put it out in the truck stops. And then there are people that I get calls from that said I was searching on Facebook and I found this service. They just wanted to tell me they found it. There's going to be people that need the Lord. And uh, I pray you'll anoint it as it goes out person will find how to be blessed every one of us want to be blessed but we've got to come God's way not temporary but it's eternal blessings that we have we love you this morning thank you for these that have made a great effort to be here I pray your blessings upon them throughout the day Our prayers made in Jesus name amen and amen, amen. You want to hear a song before you leave? We've got Christy. While we got her up here, we're just going to use her. She's going to sing. And Jerry looks like a preacher up here. He's sweating as much as I am. But he said, I'm not going to let you be out in that sun by yourself. I'm going to be right there with you. Amen. Amen. He's going to feel better when this is over. All right, there. She's going to sing and he's going to play. And uh, you want to blow your horn, you want to sing, that'd be fine.
Man, blow those horns. That means, you know, she can't wait this long. She got to do it again sometime. Amen. <laughs> 